So how does this fluffy little owlet go from being a goofy ball of fuzz to becoming one of the most efficient and silent killers in the woods? The secret lies in eating crickets and other large insects that are easier for juvenile barred owls who are still just developing their hunting skills. I've been very lucky to have the opportunity to watch barred owls a lot at many different stages of their life, including the very early stages of their life when they're first learning how to hunt. I think a lot of times we don't really consider that animals have to go through a learning process in the same way that humans do. Animals don't come into the world with all their skills fully honed, and they need to actually develop their skills through a progression. So there's a phase in the life of a barred owl after they've left the nest and after they have broken away from most of their significant dependence on their parents where they're at the point where they need to start getting their own food but their hunting skills aren't entirely up to speed with what their parents are capable of doing. So typically we think about owls as being predators of small mammals, a lot of voles and mice, and even hunting small birds like robins and chickadees and juncos. But when owls are first learning how to hunt, they need to develop their skills in a sort of training ground that is perfectly provided by the large noise-making insects like katydids and crickets. There's a huge amount of sensory training that goes into the development of every owl's hunting strategy. And most of this training involves sitting for long periods of time, listening to their surroundings, and studying their environment. Owls have the ability to pinpoint sound with extreme precision that makes them very efficient hunters at night. But they also use their eyes a lot. Their eyes are so well developed for night seeing that they've grown to the point of becoming fixed in their skulls. And the only way to look in a different direction is to actually turn their entire head. But this actually provides a special skill to the owls because this inability to move move their eyes in their sockets makes it possible for them to judge distances very effectively by turning their head from side to side. And this is the reason why owls do these crazy head movements where they're bobbing their head back and forth. Even at this early age, when the young owls are still developing their skills and don't yet have the ability to hunt a lot of the more astute creatures like birds, it's still very common for songbirds like chickadees and juncos to make alarm calls whenever they're around the barred owls. And this is often one of the ways that I am actually alerted to the presence of the owls. I'll hear these alarms and I'll go outside and I'll get to see the owls. The juveniles also have a special call that they make that sounds like kind of an airy whistling sound that they repeat at regular intervals, and it's actually extremely common for them to make this sound at this juvenile stage of development. When they become adults, they will stop making this sound. If you want to experience what it's like to use your eyes in the same way as an owl, all you have to do is fix your gaze on a particular point out in the distance, and keep your eyes locked on that spot, and then move your head from side to side. Start bobbing your head like an owl, and notice how the landscape seems to shift and alter in its relationship to your eyes. This is how owls are able to pinpoint distances, and it's this combination of their very acute hearing and pinpointing distances with this motion parallax of their peripheral vision that makes them such efficient hunters at night. The timing of juvenile owls becoming independent from their parents, alongside the peak activity of insects like crickets and katydids, just makes so much sense for the owl owls, as it gives them this time where they can start to get their own food and develop their skills and have lots of opportunities to make hunting attempts. And it's through both the failed attempts and their successful attempts that they're able to feed themselves through the summer and then eventually get to the point where they are able to get some of the more tricky prey like mice and voles. If you ever get a chance to see owls hunting, consider what is the season that you're watching them in. And 
and how is their hunting strategy reflective of this particular season? It's possible that what you're observing only happens in particular seasons or in very specific conditions, and this can be a really helpful way to start actually predicting the future hunting behavior of that owl, and it can help you actually get to see them again and start to determine why they're present at some times and when you go through periods of time when you're not seeing owls, to think critically about where might they be going, what kind of opportunities might be out there that are pulling them away from the usual places that you see them. All of this just adds such a richness to our observation of owls. We get to go outside and we get to have a peek into their world and understand them a little bit deeper. So thanks for coming along and watching these owls with me. I hope you found this interesting. And I'll see you in the next video.